Welcome, this is Brian Peterson, Director of Business Intelligence here at Jet Reports. And in today's session, we are going to be discussing uh, the creation of uh, execution packages to, uh, to uh, make our project run the way that we want, uh, when we want it. Now, as far as the execution packages are set up, um, we're gonna come right over here to the execution tab in the Jet Data Manager, and everything that we need to do is gonna be set up right in here. Um, so uh, we can set up the packages themselves, which is where we basically uh, determine uh, what we want to run and when we want those things to run. Uh, we can set up notifications, so uh, upon success or failure of a certain package, uh, you know, specific people get notified. Um, and also, um, from a previous video, I've set up some prioritizations. I'm not gonna discuss the concept of prioritizations today um, uh, in detail, but they basically allow us to control um, the order in which certain objects or the precedence in which certain objects will, uh, will run. So to get started, one of the first things I'm actually going to do is to set up a notification. Notifications are very um, useful and very important because primarily if a particular project fails uh, for some reason, then someone should be notified of that failure so that it can get fixed. And this can be anything from, uh, from maybe we're pulling from an Excel file and someone has moved that file. It can be maybe uh, you know the, the server is down for unplanned maintenance, things like that. But if the uh, scheduled execution package does not complete successfully, um, I want to uh, make sure that someone receives a notification for that. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and right click. I'll just add a notif notification. Uh, I'll just go ahead and call this, uh, right, um, maybe email the IT team or whatever it may be. And I can pick if I want to send an email right to the event log or both. In this case, I just want to send an email. Um, that'll work uh, work for me. But for the mail server, right, so this supports SMTP protocol. So I'm going to go ahead and put in, you know, mail.mycompany.com or whatever it may be. You can pick in the port uh, or plug in the port. Um, to use SSL or TLS, you can check that. A lot of these settings really depend on your organization's specific setup. So there isn't necessarily a right, you know, a right or a wrong, uh, wrong way to set this up. It just depends on your organization's setup, right? Um, also, uh, in the from email, this is something that is required, and this is going to be the email address that it shows the email is coming from. For many organizations, it doesn't actually have to be a valid email address, so it can be um, jet admin at mycompany.com or something like that. If there's a username and password required for this, then uh, you can go ahead and type this in, uh, type this in here. And then uh, more importantly down here under mail recipient, who do you want this to go to? And this can be an email address, it can be a distribution list, anything like that. So I could say that I want it to go to me and I want to right. That's not a real email address, but if I wanted it to go to it at jetreports.com, for example, uh, I could have that happen. So in the event that it fails, uh, it's going to send me an email. It's going to copy the IT group, and that way um, – and in the email, in the body of the email, it will include uh, the failure message, what the reason was, things like this. So it's, it is a very important thing that we want to set up because, again, if something happens, we want to make sure that someone knows about it so that they can step in and fix it as needed. You can also write a custom subject uh, as far as uh, some things that you um, – uh, here are some, some things that are supported as far as parameters. Uh, or otherwise, if you leave it blank, it'll just fill in a, a default subject of you know, that it failed essentially. So I have a notification. Uh, one more thing I wanted to show you here. It, once, uh, to make sure that everything's running right, you can click test notification. Uh, none of this information is legitimate, so it's not going to work for me. But it would, that would send a test email to whoever is down here just so you can make sure that the emails, uh, that the emails are set up properly and that the emails work. So once I've set up a notification, uh, I'm going to go ahead and come up here to my execution packages, and I'm going to create a new execution package. So I'm going to go ahead and add this and um, the, here this is now going to open the execution uh, the execution package window for me. Let me move this up a little bit further so that uh, most of this is on the screen here. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give this a name. Now the first execution package that I'm going to pick, I'm going to have this be an execution package that does everything in my project at night. Right. This is probably the most common scenario that we see as far as execu uh, execution packages are concerned. So I'll go ahead and just call it nightly. 
Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just drag execute project from here and I'm gonna drag it over to the include steps and drop it there. And that's basically just gonna tell the execution package that I wanna execute everything. Down below, uh, we have the ability to set manage execution, uh, which is something that can be very handy because the Jet Data Manager will actually look through all of the relationships and everything like that that it knows and determine the optimal um, order in which to run uh, the objects that are included in this particular execution package. Uh, there are a number of different ways based on the execution number, classification, uh, how long it takes, things like that. Uh, I typically just leave it as execution number. And um, in addition, we can also set the number of threads. If we have multiple cores in this computer that can be utilized, I can go ahead and run this in, say, eight threads. And what this will do is this will uh, run uh, a number of objects in parallel, right? Again, based on dependencies and a lot, a lot of other, uh, a lot of other uh, things that go into it. So I can tell it to do manage, manage execution, the number of threads that I want it to run. Um, and then uh, if you want to log the execution time in the row count for all of these tables or objects, uh, you can. Otherwise, if you don't necessarily care, you can uncheck those. Right? It can be sometimes beneficial to see over time if there are particular tables or particular cubes that are taking longer to process and if, it, if that's just because of the uh, natural increase in size or if there may be something else going on. Uh, so a few other things that we can do, uh, prioritizations, as I mentioned, this is something that's covered uh, in more detail in another video, but prioritizations of essentially allow us to come in and if I wanted uh, finance to, out of everything in this particular project, if I wanted the finance piece to finish first, right, so if I wanted to prioritize everything related to finance, I could go ahead and create a prioritization for that and then specify the prioritization right here. Under failure handling, we have a few different ways that we can handle this. Um, the default is to just fail the package. So if something happens and an error comes up, it's going to fail the package, and uh, we'll talk about notifications in a minute, and it would just stop and send out a notification. Uh, otherwise, what it, we can set it to do is we can also set it to retry the step that failed. Uh, and so if, if, if we have, um, you know, sometimes we might have uh, a connection to a database that's sometimes unreliable, Right, so there may be something uh, during the execution that's preventing us from connecting to it, but a few minutes or, or a little bit later, uh, the connection might be back up. We can set that to, to retry. So I can tell it to retry three times uh, for each step, retry twice, and I wanna wait, uh, say, five minutes in between, uh, in between each step, right? So it'll try three times to restart a package, two times to restart a step, and then it'll wait five minutes in between. So uh, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and f have it fail out the entire package, but that's what the failure, failure handling is, uh, is meant for. Then, once the execution is done, we have options as far as the notifications are concerned. So if, uh, if it succeeds, which it typically will, who do I want it to email? If it fails, who do I want it to email? And in this case, I just have one notification set up. Uh, you could have one that sends to the business users, letting them know that it succeeded, and another one sending out to the IT group, letting them know that it failed, for example. Um, one of the notes that I'll mention on this, the way that, um, that I typically like to set it up uh, for our clients is on success, we have no notification go out. And on failure, uh, failure we do. The reason for that is because if it goes out for every success or failure, people just get used to seeing this daily email in their inbox, and they just don't uh, necessarily give it the attention it might deserve, and they might just delete it. Right, so it's running for three months successfully. They just delete, delete, delete because they're just used to seeing it. And then one day they get a failure, and they just delete it because they don't think to actually look at it. So that way, uh, I typically suggest. Um, not setting a notification on success and just failure, but again, completely up to the organization and, and, uh, and the needs. And then um, in certain cases, we may have multiple packages. Uh, so I might wanna have one package that runs first, and then when it finishes, it starts another execution package and so on. So we can kind of stagger these packages out and chain them together. And if I did have multiple packages set up, which we will have in a minute and I can show you, then it would go ahead and uh, I could go ahead and select which package to run right there. But what we have here is a pretty standard setup as far as everything is concerned for just 
this is going to load everything. Uh, it's going to run eight threads because I have uh, a number of cores on my computer that I can be used for this. Um, uh, for manage execution, it's just going to base it off of the execution number. If it fails, it's just going to fail out and then send a notification. I can go ahead and click OK, and it does let me know that deployment is needed before the changes will have an effect. Now, this is an important thing to note. Uh, the reason for this is because an execution package will always run the last, uh, the last deployed version of the project. So for this to be relevant, I would want to come in here and deploy and execute some table. I typically just pick the date table because it's quick and it's easy, but this will uh, essentially create a new deployed version of the project that includes that particular execution package. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to schedule this particular execution package and tell it how often we want it to run. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this nightly execution. I'm going to come here and I'm going to click add schedule. So uh, this allows me to come in and uh, typically we see people run these on a, on a daily basis, right? So same time every day, for example. And I'm going to say that um, I can, uh, I want this to run at 11 o'clock at night, right? So I'll say 23, this needs to be in 24 hour time. I'll click add time. And so this is now going to run at 11 p.m. Uh, the frequency piece, uh, I'll set up another execution package here in just a minute that will, uh, that will cover this, but the frequency piece allows me to uh, schedule a package to run uh, on, a particular, uh, on a particular set schedule throughout the day. So, but for the case of my nightly run, it's going to execute everything in the project at 11 p.m. I can go ahead and click OK, and now that's going to be set. Now, let's say that um, I want to have another execution package because our sales team wants certain information updated on a more frequent basis, right? We don't need the inventory side of things and the payable side of things and even the receivable side of things updated, but we do want the, um, the sales cube and all of the associated tables refreshed on a more regular basis than just at 11 o'clock at night. So I'm going to come in here, right-click packages, I'm going to add another execution package, and I'll call this daily sales. And uh, let me see here. Then right down here, um, there are a number of things that I can do as far as the next piece is concerned. Uh, I do have, uh, in this case, project perspectives set up. Uh, there's another video that we have on using uh, project perspectives and dynamic perspectives, which I would highly recommend that you check out if you're um, wanting to use these. So in this example, I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, this sales perspective that was created. I'm going to drag this over to the includes, and then we'll by sure go and roll object related to the sales cube. So all the tables in the data source, all the tables in the data warehouse, all of the dimensions, etc., uh, needed to get the sales cube processed. Uh, same thing. I can go ahead and pick uh, that I want to run this as in a manage execution mode. Uh, if I wanted to set up a notification here, I could. Perfect. And I down here, if I wanted to, uh, for example, do this and then run a different package, now that we have multiple packages, you see here that I can run this. So it would run the sales package and then it would run the nightly package. Don't necessarily want to set that up, uh, but in, in cases where you want to have very uh, strict control over what runs and when, and then it calls another package that calls another package that calls another package, uh, then that can be set up uh, through this, uh, this option right down here. So I'll go ahead and click OK here. I get that note again that I need to deploy before the changes will have an effect. And I'm going to schedule this on a different basis than I did for the nightly. Right? So this is going to execute everything sales related. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to click Add Schedule. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, use frequency in this case. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, the start time and end time are, are really the, uh, the begin and end points for when this is going to run. So I'll say that I want to run this from 7 a.m., to 7 p.m. and I want it to run every two hours. So this allows me to set up multiple execution packages uh, that are going to be run. So in this case I have my nightly package which is going to update everything in my entire project at night at 11 p.m. and then in addition I have the ability to just run the sales piece of everything throughout the day every two hours between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. So you see here that we have a lot of flexibility around execution packages and how we can control um, uh, what's happening based on the needs of the organization. Now, uh, one more thing that I want to, uh, to do here is I want to talk briefly about uh, one more piece that we can set up. 
So here, uh, let's just say, I'm just gonna go ahead and create this as a, a test execution package, for example. And let's say that in this particular case, I want this to go and um, run everything in my project, right? But there may be some particular things that I want to exclude for various reasons. And that's where the exclude steps right down here comes into play, right? So this allows me to say that I wanna run everything except something. Right, so let's say that maybe um, maybe I have a few tables that just I know that really never need to get refreshed. For example, um, I can go ahead and add those to my exclude steps here. And what's going to happen is when it goes to process, the uh, the execution engine that determines everything to get processed and the order in which they should get processed will look at everything in the project except for those. Uh, one more important consideration here is I love in, in many um, many scenarios clients will set up uh, incremental loading on certain tables for example and so you may have a, a GL entry table that's got 200 million records in it and you don't want to load that data every single day again we have more documentation on how to set up incremental loading but uh, as far as uh, as that's concerned uh, periodically people may want to do full loads on those particular tables. So in here, uh, we have the ability on this tab to pick which tables should be uh, fully loaded. And I don't have any particular inc incrementally loaded tables in my project at this point. But let's just say, for example, that I wanted to add in GL entry here and that I wanted to add in my uh, finance transactions table as well. If these were incrementally loaded tables, what would happen during this execution package is it would truncate the valid table, it would truncate the I or the INCR table in the background, and essentially what that's gonna do is, um, to get away from the technical side of it, is that's going to force a full load of this particular table. So this way, once a week on Sundays or whatever it may be, I can go through and have an execution package that will just go and truncate the, um, uh, truncate the, the tables that I want to force a full load to be done. So um, this is something that was introduced in uh, Jet Enterprise 2016. So if you don't see this tab, it's most likely because you're using an older version of the Jet Data Manager and you can upgrade to get this functionality. Previously, everything had to be handled uh, on a more manual basis through the use of a script. So once this is set up, I can go ahead and click OK. And in this case, let's say that I, that I just want this particular package to run um, on a certain day. I can come in here, I can right click on test, I can click add schedule, and here I'll actually pick weekly. So I'll say I want it to run Sunday at uh, seven o'clock in the morning. I can add time. And what will happen is it will then run this particular package on Sunday at seven o'clock in the morning. Once I'm done, I can click okay, and that particular package will be, uh, will be scheduled up. So as you can see, there are a number of different ways that we can set up execution packages, we can set up notifications, and we have a lot of power and flexibility uh, over getting the right objects deploying at the right time to meet the needs of the business. So I hope that you've found this video useful, and we look forward to uh, seeing you again in a future session.